In this video, we're going to look at how to combine multiple Excel sheets into a single table or extract multiple Excel sheets into separate table objects within R so you can work with them individually. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. So this question comes from one of my students, Alan, who's taking my course, R Tidyverse Reporting and Analytics for Excel users. And the gist of this question is, is that he has an Excel sheet with multiple sheets and he wants to look at a couple of options of basically picking up all of these sheets and importing them into either a single table with an R or having a separate table for each of the sheets within R, but all done in an automatic way. So to illustrate this example, I have an Excel spreadsheet over here and I have five tabs with data. Now these are all the effectively the same data sets with uh, different categories on them, right? So um, and different car manufacturers here. Right now, all of these columns are the same. Just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna add one additional column here just to one of these tables. So I might add a notes column over here, which is a typical thing that ends up happening to data. And this will be just some random data that somebody has typed in. And it's the type of issue that you end up working with with data, uh, which can really kind of mess things up a bit when uh, you're maybe working with VBA or um, even Power Query. If this is one of the last sheets that gets imported, then you might have issues where this last column gets dropped off. So we're going to take a look at how this will work in R. I'm just going to save this and I'm going to pop over to R. So there's a couple of libraries that I'm going to load up for this exercise. The first one as always is tidyverse. And the second one I'm going to load is read Excel, right? And this library is basically used for reading Excel files. So um, there is a function called Excel sheets, and that is from our read Excel library. And I have a uh, I have the file, the Excel file that we were just working with sitting in the data folder. So here it is here. So Excel Sheets is basically going to create a list of all of the sheets that we have available here. So I have one for each car manufacturer. So from here, I am going to pipe this into a map function. And inside the map function, I basically want to read the Excel file. So I'm going to re use read XLSX. And I'm just going to do something a little bit different here, because usually what happens with this is that if we look at the parameters of this function, the first parameter here is path and the second parameter is sheet. Now, up the top here, I have a list of sheets. Now this needs to exist as the second parameter. Now by default, when I just use read Excel, it takes these into the first parameter. Now in order to make this the second parameter, what I am going to do instead is I'm going to add a little tilde in front of here. This is what's known as an anonymous function. This allows me to take this as the first parameter. And for the second parameter, I'm just going to put a dot. Now, what is dot? Dot is a syntax within R that works with pipe. And this basically passes all of these in um, to where the dot goes. Or more specifically, it passes whatever that this returns into where the dot goes. So that is that syntax. You may have seen something like dot x, um, which is effectively does the same thing. You can just use dot if there's only one element. If you have more than one element, you might see dot x and um, dot y for the second parameter. But since we are only passing in one parameter, just using the dot is fine. Now, if we take a look at this, and 
I change that to map df. Then this is basically going to combine everything into a single table. So pretty straightforward. It's just this, you know, one, or you could consider this two lines of code here. And you can see that it's taken all in all of this data. So there's a hundred and eight records here. We've got the notes column on there in there as well. Um, I could take a look at this. Let's take a look at the end of this data frame using the tail function. Right, and we can see that we have the rest of the records down the bottom here as well. Okay, so that is combining everything into a single table. But let's take a look at this other example as well, because let's say that um, for some reason that these tables don't combine well. What are a few examples where this might happen? Let's say if these columns are completely different or um, you have one sheet which is just really not very readable as data. It's uh, maybe a, um, something like an index page or something like that, a blank sheet, or maybe it has these columns, but the data types are messed up. So one is characters, one is numeric. You can't just combine those uh, without doing a little bit of manipulation on that data first. So how would you deal with this? Well, if you come back to here, effectively all you need to do is come over here and instead of having map df, all we do is have map instead. Now in the first example, we basically returned a data frame, which is a single table which contains everything. Now, if I use just the map function instead, what I get instead is I get a list. Now, a list is a special type of container with an R, which allows you to contain lots and lots of other types of data. For instance, each list item here, and I have five of them, contains a table. So here we have tibble. Uh, which is a is effectively a tidyverse table. So I have the table for <clears throat> Honda here. If I scroll back up, that's my fifth table, my fourth table here. I've got um, the table for Ford, and you can see here that it doesn't have the notes column here. And you can see that we have all of the tables imported effectively as their own tables. Now, how do you actually get access to each of these? Well, um, let me assign all of this to an object as well. So let's just say call this DT, right? And let's say DT1 is going to get the first element like so. Here's the second one. And you can basically extract your data elements like that. If you want to find out more about how to do these types of things, please check out some of the links in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.